This disturbance got started, or this disorder, or unrest, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there have been arrests made for breaking and entering and disturbing the peace and hope. such rules, orders, and regulations as I deem necessary to protect life and property and to bring the emergency situation within the affected areas under control. Now, this uh, proclamation uh, took effect as of 6 p.m. this evening, and under this proclamation, I have issued these three rules. Uh, number one, that there will be a curfew daily from 9 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. until further notice. And this means that uh, people should remain off the streets unless it involves public health or uh, other welfare considerations. And the second rule is the prohibition of all sales and the dispensing of alcoholic beverages until further notice. And that's day and night. And number three, is the, is the prohibition against the carrying of arms, ammunition, explosives, and inflammable liquids by any other person than law enforcement officers and the National Guard. These rules, as I've indicated, will be in effect until further notice. This is uh, short of martial law. Well, this is an emergency proclamation. It's not martial law. It's an emergency proclamation that uh, makes a uh, violation of these rules a uh, uh, violation of law. This means that the situation is deteriorating. But well, it means that the situation is still not under control and that we have uh, an emergency situation of serious proportions in the area of uh, mentioned. And that uh, as a result of the Request of local officials and law enforcement agencies. Uh, this action has been taken to provide such support as the state can extend in meeting this situation. 
There's some sniping, and uh, in order to provide protection for law enforcement uh, officials, uh, some heavy equipment's been moved in to provide protection for them. Otherwise, they're in the open streets and uh, completely exposed to some small arms fire. And this is not for the purpose of the use of the heavy equipment or the armament of the heavy equipment, it's for the purpose of providing protection for law enforcement to the point of the business. Well, there's uh, sporadic uh, sniping and uh,
it may be that uh, the federal personnel will not be required. But as we've assessed the entire picture, it's our judgment that it's the only prudent thing to do, and that it is necessary to make certain that we can reestablish the law and order throughout the, the city of Detroit. It's the widespread character of the difficulty uh, that uh, makes it uh, important to have sufficient personnel for it. And after all, the difficulty uh, late yesterday was on the west side of the city, but it's probably pretty well across the city now, so we're doing the better than 139 square miles from the middle of the city. And consequently, uh, in order to be on the safe side, uh, we've asked for the public personnel. Mayor Cavanaugh has informed me that he has committed all available police forces. Governor Romney has informed me that he has now committed all available state police and National Guard forces. Lawlessness and violence are continuing and have increased during the past few hours. Under these circumstances, at the request of Governor Romney, joined by Mayor Cavanaugh, General Throckmorton has been directed to commit his troops to assist local and state police forces in restoring law and order and to assume command over the Michigan National Guard.
been a good patient. Everybody, everybody is in weeds and burners, snipers. I always felt around my friend on the next day to shoot me. Where did the food work up where I was sitting? And I went Monday and said, what's going on? Monday at 7 o'clock and I kind of just woke up and speak at 9, so he went Tuesday. Because he was pretty sure to say, I mean, how many of those guys? It's a sniper gun. This is what you don't know what it was. They got those little guys. I mean, it was, it was super. Did you see anything in the ground in the area? Yeah, we're yeah. still back to look to this, this type of thing. And uh, they started to see some of them. They went, man, you know what they wanted to do. They said, they were going to turn around and start banging them. We my friends outside. Someone said they were going to set the So we were standing there, and he had his gun. It's a person that he told me to check out the gun. He told me to get out of the way. He was going to shoot me too. He said, This way, I got out of the way. I went down. I went down the elevator, and I said, Two guys were going to turn. He said, I was shooting back. He said, Can I get back in the hood and shoot me? He was trying to get him to take his gun back to His wife asked him to keep him off the He said, keep him off the He said, keep him off the bed. 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 He said, I ran out of his way. I ran out of his way. But I said, too many guns, man. So I ran back, I ran back, where he told me to move from. I ran back, trying to get back to the door. And he sat me. I remember that too. What was it like? I knew you. We were known for this poor mother. She might have said to take me back, so I got three times. And he took back all the windows and all the windows. This poor mother, I'll be here today after it's poor mother. I to get to the outside just in case. I knew we were going to get it. We put it out three times. We said, we put it out three times. 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 So I got stuck trying to get back to the other people. We put it out three times. We put it out No, not that time. I know a man up there. That's what I'm trying to make him do. The street. So I go to the street to the back of 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 the back when the guy goes, when the guy sticks his head in the 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 when you put him in, he's going to shoot him. So he shoot that the guy was dead and shot it in.
Tonight, yes, the rain is hitting well. You think the rain will have some effect on the uh, temporal drive? It has so far, but tonight, I don't know whether it will continue. Sergeant, you've just recently returned from Vietnam. Could you tell us how it feels to have to come from one zone of combat to a foreign land to find your own land? It's not a good feeling. Not what I'm kind of proud of, but it's a job, it's a duty. Private, could you tell us about your reaction? How's it feel to be in the Middle East? Actually, I'm doing anything about the rise. It's 
something different. Did you ever expect this kind of call when you joined the service? I expect a call, but it kind of surprised me when I got there that morning. They said, well, I was going to hear you go up. And I said, really? And I said, you don't know what you're going Robert Mays, would you tell us about your own opinions on this? Is this the kind of conditions you think that should exist in a country like the United States? I don't think it should exist at all. Um, people spoke to civilized you know, It should try to be like you said, like you said, last week. You know, you know, I'm actually shooting each other. I mean, some of them going out, I mean, they shoot them out of the same country. They're just kind of shooting each other while they go over there. It's like, last time, they said, go sit down. It's like, when you were meeting them. This is to the, uh, to President uh, Johnson. 
The catastrophe that destroyed the city of Detroit is a disaster by any reasonable definition of that term. Entire blocks have been leveled by fire, and pockets of destruction exist throughout the city. Losses due to fire and looting have been estimated at hundreds of millions of dollars, and these estimates may well prove to be conservative. However, we have been advised by Governor Ferris Bryant, and he heads up the Office of Emergency Planning for the President, and Deputy United States Attorney General Christopher, that the provisions of the Federal Disaster Assistance Act have not in the past been applied to disasters other than those resulting from natural causes. Last week, part of the Detroit metropolitan area was declared a disaster area following a five-inch rainfall. It simply does not make sense to commit federal assistance to the city of or to, to refuse to commit federal assistance to the city of Detroit in view of what has happened there in recent days. We urgently request that this policy be reevaluated in view of in view of the fact that the statute covers natural disasters, quote, or other catastrophe which in the determination of the president, end quote warrant special federal assistance, and that such assistance be approved for the city of Detroit. To that end, I have asked Mr. Vance and Mr. Christopher to confer with you immediately and determine what those needs are and to report promptly. I have also instructed the officials concerned to move without delay to meet the needs of those who have suffered at the hands of Rodney as soon as these needs can be determined. The decision to move food into Detroit for those in need was made yesterday. I have directed the release of drugs and hospital equipment for emergency use, and they are available upon the request of your health authorities, signed at Lyndon B. Johnson, President of the United States. <laughs> Work together to put a prompt end to lawlessness and violence. In our society, lawlessness and violence cannot and will not be tolerated. Although our task is not yet fully completed, the time has come for the citizens of Detroit to join together to ensure that law and order are maintained in this community. The time has also come for all of its citizens to reunite and rebuild this great city. So I gathered from what the Secretary said that the, the General said there's been great improvement. But I also gather that there is still the problem of, of making certain that we have reestablished the law and order in the community and that we can maintain it. I hope this is over, but I am not certain it is over. I want to make that perfectly clear. We, all of us here today, are witnessing and we are sharing one of the most eloquent expressions of the human spirit, in spite of the tragedy and in spite of the passions which we also share and claim. And that is, that in the midst of disaster, the most powerful unifying forces of human life surge forth. And they express themselves in such a way that the barriers and the traditional restrictions of class and of race and color are obliterated.
problem there is I'm not being one of the spectators, gossips, and photographers to maintain traffic, permit needed restoration and work on public utilities, and the cleaning of streets and sidewalks. The curfew is being reimposed. It will again be from 9 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. until further notice. Gas stations and amusements will be permitted to open only during the non-curfew hours. Because of the lifting of the curfew announced earlier today, police and military personnel will use discretion and understanding in the curfew enforcement tonight. That will be up to the uh, military and the police. Detroit, the Highland Park, Camp Stanley, Grillwood, and Peninsula. With respect to Boyer, Thank you. 